Good morning, St. Mark. Good morning. For those who can stand, would you please stand for the reading of God's will, which is word. I'll be reading Psalms 150. And it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his firmness of power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him in his according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with sound and tr yes. trumpet. Yes. Praise him with pastries and harps. Yes. Praise him with timbrels and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise yes. upon him with the loud sound cymbals. Let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now we're turning over to our amazing praise team. Hallelujah.
you for providing for us throughout this past week. Lord, you have supplied us with all the necessities of life. Health, strength, food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you, Lord, for providing for us. And then, Lord, we want to thank you for your protection throughout this world. When the enemy tried to blindside us, Lord, you protected us. You kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, not only did you provide for us and protected us, you, you guided us. When we couldn't find our way, when we found ourselves between a rock and a hard place, Lord, you made a way out of nowhere. And Lord, we just thank you for guiding us through circumstances seen and unseen. We thank you, God, for loving us and caring for us and watching over us. And Lord, we want to pray for those who are sick on today. Those who are dealing with an illness, Lord. Those who are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Lord, we ask that you strengthen and comfort and give peace right now in the name of Jesus. Peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. Oh, just we ask right now that you comfort, oh God. Comfort those who are hurting, those who are suffering right now. Lord, comfort right now in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, you know that you're able. You're able, oh God, to do all things. Lord, all we have to do is just turn it over to you, Lord. And move out the way, and Lord, you will work it out in the only the way that you know how. We thank you, God. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died upon the cross, who endured the shame, who was battered and bruised for our sins, so that we can live this life and live it more abundantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, we had a thousand tongues. We couldn't thank you enough for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for being a loving God. Thank you for being a God who can make a way out of no way. A God who can turn the impossible into possible. We thank you, oh God. And Lord, we want to pray for the preacher we're on today. Oh Lord, touch the man of God. Give him a word from Ohio, Lord. A word that will change souls. Word that will cause someone to turn from their wicked ways and come running to you. And Lord, we, we want to thank you for all your goodness. Lord, there's some things you do in our lives that we overlook sometimes. The little things, the small things. Lord, but we want to thank you for everything you do in our lives.
shake it loose, amen. Not shake it loose, but you know, get it warmed up. <laughs> you don't need nobody to shake it. That's what it's up. <laughs> amen. So I'm standing today because it would be remiss if we uh, don't mention anything about Martin Luther King with his birthday being took uh, yesterday, but the observation is on tomorrow, amen. amen. Um, so we just, I, I just wanted to share. Ten things that you know some people may know, some people may not know um, about Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Baptist minister and social activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, who served his time 1929 to 1968, dedicated his life to the nonviolent struggle for justice in the United States. King's leadership played a pivotal role in ending entrenched segregation for African Americans and to the creation of the Civil Rights Act. The first fact uh, that some may know and some may not know is that King's birth name was Michael and not Martin. King was born Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929. In 1934, however, his father, a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, traveled to Germany and became inspired by a Protestant Reformation leader, Martin Luther. As a result, King Sr. changed his own name as well as the name of his five-year-old son. The second fact is King entered college at the age of 15. King was such a gifted student that he skipped grades 9 and 12 before enrolling in 1944 in Morehouse College the alma mater of his father and maternal grandfather. Although he was the son and grandson and great-grandson of Baptist ministers, King did not intend to follow the family vocation until Morehouse President Benjamin E. Mays, a noted theologian, convinced him otherwise, and then King was ordained before graduating college with a degree in sociology. Fact three is that King received his doctorate in systemic theology. After earning a divinity degree from Pennsylvania's Crozier Theological Seminary, King attended graduate school at Boston University, where he received his PhD um, and degree in 1955. The title of his dissertation was A Comparison of the Conceptions of God in the Thinking of Paul Tillich and Henry Nielsen Women. The fourth fact is that King's I Have a Dream speech was not his first at the Lincoln Memorial. Six years before his iconic oration at the March on Washington, King was among the civil rights leaders who spoke in the shadow of the great emancipator during the, the, during the prayer pilgrimage for freedom on May 17, 1957, before a crowd estimated at 15,000 and 30,000. King delivered his first national address on the topic of voting rights. His speech in which he urged America to give us our battle. Sound familiar? We're still going through it today, amen? And it drew strong reviews and positioned him at the forefront of the civil rights, uh, civil rights leadership. The fifth fact is that King was in prison nearly 30 times. Uh, according to the King Center, the civil rights leader went to jail 29 times. He was arrested for acts of civil disobedience, and on trumped up charges, such as when he was in jail in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956 for driving 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. Again, nothing seemed like it's changed. The sixth fact is that King narrowly escaped an assassination attempt a decade before his death. On September 20th, 1958, King was in Harlem signing copies of his new book, Stride Toward Freedom, in Bloomstein's department store when he was approached by Azala Ware Curry. The woman asked if he was Martin Luther King Jr. And after he said yes, Curry said, I've been looking for you for five years, and she plunged a seven inch letter opener into his chest. The tip of the blade came to, the, uh, rest, came to rest alongside of his aorta. And King underwent hours of delicate emergency surgery. Surgeons later told King that just one sneeze could have punctured his aorta and killed him. From the hospital bed where he convalesced for weeks, King issued a statement affirming his nonviolent 
principles and saying he felt no ill will toward his mentally ill attacker. The seventh fact is that King's last public speech foretold his death. King had come to Memphis in April 1968 to support the strike of the city's black garbage workers, and in a speech on the night before his assassination, he told an audience in Mason Temple Church, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as people will get to the promised land, and I am happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Amen. The eighth fact is that members of King's family believe, uh, did not believe James Earl Ray acted alone. Ray, a career criminal, pled guilty to King's assassination, but later recanted. King's son, Dexter, met publicly with Ray in 1997 and argued for the case to be reopened. King's widow, Coretta, believed that the mafia and local, state, and federal government agencies were deeply involved in the murder. She praised the result of a 1999 civil trial in which Memphis jury decided the assassination was the result of a conspiracy and that Ray was set up to take the blame, uh, to take the blame. A U.S. Department of Justice investigation released in 2000 reported no evidence of a conspiracy. Number nine, fact nine, King's mother was also slain by a bullet. On June 30th, 1974, a 69-year-old Alberta Williams King played the organ at a Sunday service inside Ebenezer Baptist Church. Marcus Wayne Chenault Jr. rose from the pew, drew two pistols, and began to fire shots. One of the bullets struck uh, and killed King, who died steps from where her son preached nonviolence. The deranged gunman said that Christians were his enemy and that although he received divine instructions to kill King's father, who was in the congregation, he killed King's mother instead because she was closer. The shooting also left a church deacon dead. Chenault received a death penalty sentence that was later changed to life in prison, in part due to King's family opposition to capital punishment. And the tenth fact is George Washington and Abraham Lincoln are the only other Americans to have had their birthdays observed as a national holiday. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan signed a bill that created a federal holiday to honor King. The holiday first commemorated in 1986 is celebrated on the third Monday in January, close to the civil leader's birthday. And so these are just 10 facts that some may have known and some might not have known about Martin Luther King Jr. Again, let's honor his birthday and say it's a day off is actually a day on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God is good. He is good. I want to thank Sister Erin, let's give her another hand. Lord, that MLK moment. Some facts that she shared, things that I didn't know. And she was sharing how his name originally was Michael, but it was eventually changed to Martin Luther King. And how even these many years later, we're still fighting for something that should be a given as an American citizen. If you are born in this country, it should be a given, Brother Washington, that when I reach a certain age, I should be able to vote. And we're still fighting for things that should be a given that he fought for many, many years ago. So we want to thank uh, Dr. King for the sacrifices that he made. Amen. And how we said on last Sunday, must Jesus burn the cross alone? Right. And all this world go free. No, there is a cross for everyone. Yes, and there is a cross for me. Yeah. And so Dr. King, he bore his cross and we want to thank him 
for all of that. Just want to make a few quick announcements here. Um, Sister Therese is working on updating the church's directory. And if your contact information uh, has changed and needs to be updated, she wants you, if you would, to get with her as soon as possible. And even if it hasn't changed, could you please just confirm with her that your contact information that we currently have is updated. Can I get an amen? amen? So if we can reach out to Sister Threes as soon as possible to let her know, yes, my info has changed, here it is. I want to update it or no, it has not, and we're good to go. And then that way, that's one project she can finish and move on to some other things that needs to be done. And then we know this month is the fifth Sunday, and we have a fifth Sunday um, ready to go. We have our guest speaker in place and spoke with her myself about a week or so ago. Looking forward to hearing her. Uh, her name is Lila Stanley. She's coming from Oakland Bible Fellowship and she's going to bring a different dynamic this fifth Sunday for us as we were in all looking for somebody to come who is actually in the field. Uh, who's out there in the missionary field, whether it is foreign or domestic, and who is doing God's work as the church has been called to do. And so we're excited about this young lady who's going to come and share with us yeah. what God is doing. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. And the attire that the ladies are asked to wear is black with pearls accessories. So if you have black with some pearls accessory. Ladies, you're asked to wear that. Have a thank you card, St. Mark. This says, grateful and blessed. Thanking God for you, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16. It says, thank you all and so much for the cards, calls, gifts, and prayers during my time of illness. God bless all of you abundantly for your kindness and thoughtfulness. This comes from Sister Marjorie Washington. Amen. We're glad Amen. to know that she is doing much better. Prayer works, does it not, St. Mark? And speaking of prayer, we uh, reconvene and started up again our Tuesday night uh, prayer service, our time of corporate prayer. And I just want to personally commend you, St. Mark, all of you for your participation as we kicked off our time of corporate prayer for the year of 2022. Uh, Brother Blue was kind enough to provide a uh, roll call or call report for us. And just looking at the call report to see so many participants. Yeah. We had well over 20 people. I think we ought to give ourselves a hand, St. Mark. We have well over 20 people, and that's not, and that's just what the the log counts. But we not, we don't even know the people that's that's listening in. That's right. You know, that's right. you have people who they may use their phone, but they're listening in to their spouses, and so we could be over uh, Brother McDonald over 30 people right. uh, on on Tuesday night. We have triple St. Mark with our participation. In our time of corporate prayer, when we were having it on campus, we we, we were fortunate if we get eight people. Right. We were fortunate if we get eight people, but now we, we, we're averaging over 20, 25 people every Tuesday night. And we are to be commended for that, and we thank God for that. You know, we, we said on Tuesday night that the prayer of righteous people can accomplish a whole lot of things. That's what James tells us in James chapter five. And so it's when we come together on Tuesday night as a corporate body of believers, we're, we're doing spiritual warfare. We're pulling down strongholds. Yeah, right. we're, we're breaking shackles. Yeah. We're breaking every chain. People are being delivered. Families are being blessed. And so we just excited about the time of prayer. It is a spiritual discipline that God has given to the church because he knew the the ebb and flow of life oh yeah he knew about the valley of the shadow of death he knew about those things oh, yeah. and so he provided us with this spiritual resource where we can talk to him 
tell him all about our trouble. Yeah. And he can hear our faintness crying, answer by and by. Yeah. Then you feel that little prayer return? Yeah. Then you know that fire is burning? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. just in the yeah. talk with Jesus, yeah. we're having a little bit of that. We'll make everything all right. All right. So, St. Mark, I want to commend you for your participation and joining us on Tuesday night. We'll be back again this coming Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Please join us. And what we do at St. Mark is not limited to the St. Mark family, but to the extended family yeah. as well. And speaking of prayer, we want to keep the Loftus family in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's keep the Loftus family in prayer. I was really saddened this past week when I got the first text message that Sister Regina Loftus wasn't doing well. I, I didn't even know she was sick. Didn't even know she was sick. And my wife had told me last Sunday, because I wasn't actually here in in the, the sanctuary doing the time of intercessory prayer. She was telling me that, you know, Reverend Loftus asked that we pray for his sisters. I said, okay, all right. Then the next day I get a text message mm -hmm. from someone telling me her condition is was dire as it was. Then I text him, Reverend Loftus, and say, didn't know, didn't know, and he texted me back to explain to me, and then, bam, the next day or so, she's gone to glory. Life is filled. And so we, we, we just want to pray for our brother. Uh, Regina was faithful at this church. Amen. She was faithful at this church. And, uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was, but she was faithful to church. We're going to miss her, but we want to lift her up, the family up, and Reverend Loftus up. We'll get back with you with the details once that is made available to us. Just wanted to make those quick announcements. Now we're going to have our praise team to come back, and then we'll come back and see what, what the Lord has to say. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the conditions of discipleship. Mm -hmm. And for the past couple of weeks, we, we fleshed out three of those conditions that we see right here in the text, which are desire, mm -hmm. denial, mm -hmm. and death. Yeah. Today, Saint Mark, as we finalize this sermon series, we want to flesh through the fourth and final condition that we see here in our text that discipleship demands, and then conclude with three cautions mm -hmm. that Jesus gives us. Mm -hmm. Are y'all gonna go with me today, sir? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The fourth condition, as we see here in our text, that discipleship demands is devotion. All right. Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, yeah. He must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Yeah. The fourth condition of discipleship is devotion. Here at St. Mark, we see the word and again. We see the word and again. We saw it last week and we, we see it again this week because Jesus says, not only and take up your cross daily and yeah. follow yeah. me. We said on last week and we want to say today that the word and here uh, translated means also. Mm -hmm. All right. And what it means is it's a, it's a continuation uh, of, of what has been said. Yeah. Of the conditional clause that Jesus introduced when he used the word if. What I'm trying to say, St. Mark, is that it's not until you and I are sure mm -hmm. that we desire, that we are desiring to be a disciple. It's not until you and I are sure that not only are we desiring to be a disciple, but we are also denying and dying to self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That we are ready to take the next step. Yeah. Of follow me because Jesus wants us to know that each condition is as necessary as and important as the other That's right. Yeah. Right. that it's not a matter of either or That's right. yeah. oh yeah I, I take that one but I'm not sure I don't want that yeah. one it's not a matter of either or when it comes to being yeah. a disciple yeah. Jesus wants us to know that each condition is as necessary and as important as the other. So since it's not a matter of either or, it's all of the above. Right. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, and D. It's all of the above. Yeah. It, 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 it's about desire. It's about denial. Yeah. It's about death. And it's about devotion. Yeah. So Jesus says, and follow me. To flesh out this fourth condition, we want to do so by looking at Jesus' words, follow me, yeah. in reverse. All right. Let's see. Let's see. To, to flesh out this fourth condition of devotion. Represented by the phrase, follow me. We want to do so by, by taking those words of Jesus, follow me, and look at them in reverse. All right. All right. Okay. St. Mark, the reason why we want to begin with me, uh -huh. the follow me, the, the reason why we want to begin with the me in that phrase, is because discipleship is demanding. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you think about it, it's... I, I have to not only desire to be a disciple, mm -hmm. I have to also deny mm -hmm. myself, and I gotta die right, right, right. Uh, all right. to myself. And then you say I have to be devoted. Right. <laughs> we we, we want to begin with me because discipleship is 
demanded. Do I have any, 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 anybody living in the real world and, and you realize, hey, what Jesus is calling us to do, it, 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 it's, this ain't for somebody that's a coward. That's right. All right. All right. All right. You know, you, you know, you got brothers who think they hard and everything. But try to be a Christian. Don't try to be a thug. Yeah. Come on. Try being a Christian. Yeah. You want to you be hard? Try being a Christian. Yeah. Being a thug is easy compared to being on, a true follower. Yeah. You don't have any witnesses in the house. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you right? It, 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 we, 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 we're starting with the word me because discipleship is demanding and we we really need to know who it is that's calling us to follow. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. We need to know. We need to know yeah, right. who it is that's calling us to follow. How many of us know that some people are following anybody? I mean, so, some folks are following anybody. And, and, and it don't matter that the person is lacking character. The, the, the person can be lacking character, and some folks will still follow them. Mm -hmm. And I want to suggest, St. Mark, that, that that's one of the reasons why our country is in the condition it's in today being torn apart, polarized, mm -hmm. democracy in peril. It's because you got people who would just follow yeah. anybody. Yes. 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 Got folks because they following certain people. Right. Brother Three, they, they climbing walls they shouldn't be climbing. Yeah. I wish I had some help. Yeah. I mean, busting out windows they shouldn't be busting out. Yeah. Walking in the foyer or foyers they shouldn't be walking in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Got their feet up on people's desks that their feet shouldn't be up on. Right. Desecrating places they shouldn't be desecrating. Yeah. Putting officers, even killing officers. Yeah. 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 Because we got folks following just anybody. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. We got the blind. <laughs> and, 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 and if this country is not careful, one of these days, this country is going to find itself in a hole somewhere. That, that's what happened. You had a blind lead a blind. Can't nobody see where they're going. The person they follow is up in a hole, and the folks that's following ends up in a hole. Some people would just follow anybody. But the me in our texture. The, 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 the me, the me, the me, the me, the me in our texture is not just some anybody. Yeah. Come on. Right. Yes, the me in our text is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. 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 And if anybody deserves to be followed, yeah. it ought to be him. Do I have any witnesses? Yeah. If you're going to follow anybody, you need to make sure it's the me. Yeah. Right. Right. Here in our text. Right. Think about it, St. Martin. Jesus, the name Jesus means Savior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He is the very one who God sent yes, sir. Yes, sir. to save us yeah, right. of our sins. Do I have any Bible students in the house today? Right. Yeah. The name Christ means anointed one. Mm -hmm. Now we have people who claim to be anointed. Yeah, right. Right. Oh, Lord. But he is the Anointed one. The name Emmanuel means God with us. When Jesus was born, he was literally God in the flesh. And John 1 tells us, and we beheld his glory. And then when you look at Revelation, John tells us that he's King of Kings, he's Lord of Lords, he's the Alpha and the Omega. Don't have the Bible students in the house today. He, he's the beginning and the end. He is who is, who was, and who is to come. Who am I talking about? The Almighty. So when Jesus invites us to follow him, we need to recognize who it is that's doing the calling. Do I have any witnesses? 
Somebody say you better recognize. Who's the man I text? Jesus. And it's important to know who it is that's calling us to follow. And if there's anybody that you and I should follow, it ought to be Jesus. But notice, if you will. Trying to keep my words, St. Mark. Right. Trying to keep my words. The word follow, St. Mark, means to walk the same road with. Brother McDonough, it means to, to walk the same road with. When Jesus says, follow me, what he's actually doing is inviting us mm. uh -huh. mm. to join him yeah. in his journey. Yeah, yeah, right. And if you and I choose to do that, if you and I choose to do that, and as one preacher once said, we put our feet into the print of his footsteps. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. What am I trying to say? Wherever he goes, I go. Whatever step he takes, I take. If he goes right, I go right. Whatever direction he goes, I, I'm, I'm putting my foot, my feet actually in the footprint that Jesus has put before me. I'm walking the same road with him. And you see that when Jesus says, follow me, not only is it an invitation to join him in his journey, but it it's, it's, it's also has a personal aspect to it. When he says, follow me, it, it has a personal aspect to it because discipleship, St. Mark, is not about a system of rules, and rituals. Christians, that's one thing we really need to embrace and really need to understand. Mm, because sometimes I fear that after being saved for two days, mm -hmm. you know, you got some folks they've been saved two days, Brother Born, and all of a sudden they 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 are holier than everybody else. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden they become legalistic about everything. Yeah. And before you know it, there's a whole lot of rules and regulations, and, and, and the spirit of discipleship is lost. Yes. And instead of attracting people, we turn people off. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Yeah, we, 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 we've been saved two days, and we forgot the lifestyle we, we, we were delivered from. How we used to run the streets all night long until this morning time. I wish I had some help for today. How we would go into clubs. We would shut the club down. But then when, 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 when the Lord saved us and we've been in church for two days, all of a sudden we get amnesia about where the Lord brought us from. And we become so legalistic and rigid that nobody is, is, is attracted yes. to the Jesus we talk about. Oh, right. Discipleship, when Jesus says, follow me, it, it, it has a personal aspect to it because it's not about a lot of rules and rituals. Right. But discipleship is about a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they say right there. It's about a relationship yes. with the Savior. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what is so attractive is when people see that you are in a relationship with him. So Jesus really is inviting us to be close to him. Yes. Right. He's inviting us to learn from him. Thank you. He's inviting us to walk that same road with him. Thank you. Is anybody on the same road Thank with Jesus? Yes. Yes. Come on. Amen. Sounds is anybody walking close to Jesus? Yes. Sounds Amen. Amen. Is, is anybody learning from him today? Yes. And, and, and it will be obvious. Sir. It's going to be obvious. Yes, yes, yes. Because people are going to be able to see the Lord in your life. I suggested on last time, who's in front? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who's in front? And could it be the reason why I can't see Jesus? Because you're in front. Yeah. Right. I got to do this. and yeah. I'm looking, but I, oh, there he is. Oh, he's behind you. 
But Jesus says, follow, follow me. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. St. Mark here in our text, this is not the first time Jesus issued the word, the invite, to follow me. All right. Get a chance. Just go home and you just peruse the gospel. Yeah. For example, you look in Matthew chapter 4. When Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. he came across two brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Simon Peter and Andrew, yeah. who were casting their nets into the sea. Yeah. And Jesus simply said to them, hey, follow me. Yeah. Right, right. We're told when he said to them, follow me, he says, yeah, I know y'all are fishermen, but I'm getting ready to do something wonderful in your life. I'm getting ready to make you fishers of me. Yes. <laughs> he walked a little further down the sea of Galilee, came across two other brothers, right. James and John, yeah. whose father was Zebedee, and they were in the boat. And Jesus said the same thing to them. Right. Follow me. Yeah. Go to Matthew chapter 9 when he came past um, Matthew's tax office. Yeah. He simply said to Max, uh, Matthew while he was in the tax office, Matthew, follow me. Yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Look at John chapter 1 when he found Philip. Yeah. All, All he simply said to Philip, Philip, hmm. follow me. me. Yeah. And St. Mark in each one of those instances, when he issued the invite, to follow me, they did it without delay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right, right, right. Yeah. These brothers had profitable fishing businesses. Yes, yeah. Yeah. They left their profitable fishing business to go and follow Jesus. Yeah. And they did it without delay. So when Jesus issued the invite, follow me. There's a biblical precedent. Yes, that is to be done without delay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. St. Mark, after Jesus had issued a call to discipleship, mm -hmm. and then after having provided the conditions of discipleship, he concluded that day by giving three cautions. Can I share them with you? We'll be here. All right. All right. All right. All right. Just give me about two or three minutes, we'll be finished. Right. He concluded by giving them three cautions. Keep in mind, when it says, then he said to them, all the all consisted of the committed core, his disciples, yeah. Yeah. and the curious crowd, that multitude. Y'all remember we said that about two weeks or so ago. That, that, that's, that's the context. That's, that's who he's been talking to this day. But after he concluded by giving a call and by giving the conditions, he provided them, the disciples as well as the curious crowd, yeah. three cautions. The first is right there in verse 24 of our text. Yeah. For whoever wants to save his life yeah. will lose it. Right. But whoever loses his life for me, we'll save it. Yeah. Jesus said to us, St. Mark, to anybody, mm -hmm. that if you try to save your life, All right. Come on. Yeah. if you try to save your life by not giving it to me, yeah. Yeah. he said, you're going to lose it. Gonna lose it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. He said, you're going to lose it. St. Mark, this verse here is an example of what unintended consequences look like. Yeah. Unintended consequences, and when you try to do something, prevent something, but it still happens anyway right. because of what you did. Yeah. All right. Jesus says, if you try to keep your life, anybody that is, yeah. if you try to keep your life for yourself, yeah, and not give it to me, yeah. you're gonna lose it. Yeah. He says, but but if you if you give me your life, yeah. Yeah. To be your Savior right. and your Lord, mm -hmm. in return, I'm going to give you eternal life right. 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 and the fulfillment right. that comes with it. Come on, I don't know about you, Saint Mark. I don't want to lose my life. I want fulfillment. I want, yeah. fulfillment. Yeah. I want eternal life. Does anybody want eternal life? Yeah. Come on. I, I want to lose my life. Yeah. I, I want eternal life, and I want the fulfillment that comes with it—the joy. 
the peace, yeah. the yeah. purpose. Yeah. I want all that it brings. Yeah. Jesus said, if you give it your life to me to be your Savior and your Lord, in return, I'm going to give you what you can't have on your own. That's yeah. eternal yeah. life. Yeah. All right. And all the fulfillment mm -hmm. that comes with it. But if you don't give me your life, <laughs> you're going to lose it. Then Jesus gives this second caution by way of a probing question. Verse 25. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self. See, Jesus says that a person can gain all the stuff that this world has to offer, but if they do it at the expense of losing their soul, that is a bad investment. What makes it a bad investment is that what we have lost in the process, what we have lost, which was our soul, is worth infinitely more than what we gained, which was the stuff that this world has to offer. And I don't know about you, Samuel, but I want to be a wise investor. Yes, sir. Wise investor. Yes, sir. Brother Loftus, I want to be a wise investor. Yes, sir. Wise investors don't look to make a loss. Right. That's right. Wise investors look to make a profit. Yeah. Right. And Jesus says that if you don't invest in me, if you don't invest your life in me, you're going to end up losing it. Yeah. Do I have any wise investors? Yes, sir. I'm not just talking about the Fortune 500. I'm not talking about the S&P. No. I'm not talking about NASDAQ. Do we have any spiritual, yeah, yeah. kingdom-wide yeah. investors in the house today? Yes, yeah. sir. That you have invested your life in Jesus. Yes, sir. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Then he gives the third and final caution in verse 26. Yes, sir. If any... One is ashamed of me mm -hmm. and my words. Yeah. Yeah. The Son of Man will be ashamed of him Amen. when he comes in his glory Amen. and in the glory of his, the Father and of the holy angels. Yeah. Simply put, <laughs> Jesus says this, if anybody is ashamed to accept me as they say, mm -hmm. when I return in glory, yeah, right. Yeah. I'll be ashamed mm -hmm. Can you of them. All right, all right. Samuel, for the past three weeks remember. this new year, in 2022, all I have been arguing from the text is that Jesus is the best investment we can make. Yes. Yes. Because in him is eternal life. And all the fulfillment yeah, that's right. that comes with it. Yeah. And eternal life don't begin when we close our eyes and we die. That's eternal right. life begins the very moment we accept that's Jesus Christ. Right. That's right. That's right. And all the blessings that comes with being eternally saved yes, can be realized the moment you and I accept Christ. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I want a life that's eternal. I want a life that's blessed. I want a life that's fulfilled. Yes, and I'm going to make Jesus my primary investment. Do I have a witness to that? Perhaps there's somebody here today you haven't made that investment. Or you're online and you have not made that investment. You have not chosen to invest your life in Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord. Today is a good day to make that decision. And Jesus says if you try to save your life you'll lose it. But if you give your life to me to be your Savior and your Lord in return he'll give you eternal life and the fulfillment 
that comes with it. Is there anybody here today?